Every year, in the great wheat belt just east of the Rockies, the fields turn to gold. Every year, with luck and hard work, thousands of families on large and small farms harvest the golden grain. This is the story of how one family in Kansas raised and harvested a crop of winter wheat. Work for the new crop of winter wheat begins just after harvest time or in late summer. The earth is plowed and replowed to prepare a good bed for the wheat seed. Later, a harrow breaks up the large clods and smooths the ground. When the soil is moist enough, the seed bed is made ready for planting. Come on, Tom, put the rest in. Okay, here it is. That's, that's enough, that's full enough. All right, just hold it close there and get going. The rush to plant in the fall. One half bushel to the acre, flowing down through the hollow drills. The tips are like tiny plows, each making its furrow into which the seed falls and is covered. The wheat may grow four or five inches again before winter stops it. Next spring, the plants will grow tall and mature. And then, if the crop escapes insect pests and plant diseases, if it's not destroyed by hail, if all goes well next summer, there will be a good harvest. Thanks to today's mechanized farming, there's more time for the family to visit in the town nearby. Time for the boys and girls to meet friends for a swim before the pool closes for the winter. Time to shop for new clothes, to look at new equipment. On the farm, there's always work. With his wife's help, the farmer runs his farm like a business. In his spare time, he studies pamphlets and books to keep up with the best farming techniques. Most of his several hundred acres are in wheat, but a few milk cows help the family budget. And of course, there's always something needing repair. He has to have the skills of a carpenter and a mechanic. Hey, Tom. What do you want? Lee phoned and said not to forget the 4-H meeting tonight. I won't. We're both on the program. Think you'll get clean by then? I'll work on it. Okay. In some ways, 4-H club meetings in the Wheat Belt states are pretty much the same as in other farm areas. The girls' projects range from learning how to prepare and package frozen food to gardening and photography. They share their successes and their mistakes. <laughs> but many of the members' projects are aimed at the special problems of wheat farming. They are guided by reports on the latest experiments being made at the State Agricultural College. Organizations like the 4-H clubs and the Future Farmers of America combine business and social life for these young farm people. Most important, they help guide them toward the kind of scientific farming done today, not only in the wheat belt, but throughout the nation. Now the warm sun and the rain have brought the crop to maturity. The heads full of mature seeds are beginning to bend with ripeness. A simple, age-old test, crumpling the heads to separate the chaff from the grain. The grain is full and dry, 
no insects, no disease, and good weather. Yes, it's ready to cut. It's now or never. Hello, John. This is J.M. Bring out 200 gallons of gas by tomorrow noon. I'm going to start combining. From the first morning that the combine and pickup truck head for the fields, all life on the farm centers around the harvest. Around now, the neighbors will be cutting too. Some who don't own their own combines hire a man to cut the crop. They call it custom cutting. This is the third year Tom has done a man's work at harvest. He stands by to take the grain to storage, and he'll spell off his father on the combine every few hours. And this is the combine. It combines a reaper which cuts the grain with a thresher which separates the straw from the grain. Cutting, threshing, cutting, threshing. As the wheat is cut, an auger delivers the grain to a conveyor belt, which carries it up into a tank just behind the driver's seat. The straw is blown out the back. The combine does its work and the tank fills up with grain. When the tank is full, the grain is emptied into the waiting truck. They're doing fairly well, getting about 25 bushels to an acre. In a very good year, some farmers might get over 50 bushels to an acre. Tom takes the loads to the storage bins on their farm or over to the local elevator nearby. His father gets on with the job. At the same time, on some large-scale farms in western Kansas, as many as six combines work at once. Here, too, there's the constant tension to cut and store the crop relentlessly, without stopping, using every hot, sunny hour to get the crop cut. One by one, the trucks load up and drive off. The combines roll on. Blight, insects, drought, hail. But if his crops survive these enemies and reach storage safely, the wheat farmer's work is done. At the storage elevator, both the small and large scale farmers do the same thing. He's weighed in on the scales. They test a sample for moisture and grain, dump the wheat, and back he goes for the next load. Once the bins and elevators are filled with wheat, this major food crop becomes an important factor in the nation's business and politics. The work goes on. For several days now, cutting has begun as soon as the morning dew evaporates from the wheat. Long hours of hot, dusty work, pausing only to load the truck, put in more gas, or eat lunch. Tom hurries through the meal and gets back to the combine to give his father a chance to eat. So far, none of the frequent early summer hailstorms have come near them. All the more reason to hurry.
Everyone works on the wheat from mid-morning to sunset. Margaret and her mother have been doing the usual chores at home and bring out lunch every day. They may even take turns driving the truck to the elevator. Things taste good even in the dusty field. The harvest is nearly done. On the last morning of cutting, the sky suddenly clouds up. It doesn't look good. Might be hail. All right then, we'll just have to finish cutting before it hits us. Today, though, the threatening storm goes by, breaking on the horizon. Someone may have had bad luck over there. One minute you've got a crop, the next, nothing. This time, our family was lucky, and they know it. Well, the crop is in all over the county. Soon, all the wheat in Kansas will be safely stored. Wheat for bread, for pastry flour, for livestock feeds. Some wheat to be used now at the flour mills. Some to be stored indefinitely. This has been a good year for our farmer and his family. Hopefully, they'll look forward to next year's harvest. To the next golden sea of wheat.